Now let's talk about other uh, uh, systems where images can be formed. We're going to look at uh, spherical mi mirrors, which are the simplest type of mirrors we can talk about uh, that form images. There's also parabolic mirrors and hyperbolic mirrors, but uh, let's just focus on spherical mirrors and lenses. And we're going to talk about two types of spherical mirrors. There's a concave and a convex. And let's talk about the properties of the concave mirror. When an image is formed with a concave mirror, the image can be real or it can be virtual. It can be right, right side up or upside down, or it can be larger or smaller than the object. When an image is formed with a convex mirror, the image is always virtual. The image is always smaller than the object. And an example is the right rear view mirror on your car. What's an example of a, or, or, um, I guess a simple example of a spherical mirror or something close to it? Your tablespoon or right, your soup spoon. The side that you put the food in uh, you would call that the concave mirror and the opposite side would be the convex mirror so when you're eating if you're eating soup tonight take a look at yourself with the concave side of the spoon and you'll notice at some point that if the distance between you and the spoon is correct the image of yourself will be upside down and you will look like your image is in front of the uh, the spoon if you split, uh, flip the spoon over on the convex side, the image will always be right side up and smaller than you, because that image is always virtual. Now lenses, we're gonna focus on two types of lenses, the concave lens and the convex lens. Concave lens, the image is always virtual and smaller than the object. A convex lens, the image can be real or virtual, right side up or upside down, larger or smaller than the object. The concave mirror behaves like the convex lens. The convex mirror behaves like the concave lens. Here's a picture of a concave mirror with light coming in towards the mirror. Now, we're, we're looking at rays coming from a distant source that are coming in parallel to each other. And I should say something about the concave mirror. And that is that the uh, the line that joins the focus point of the mirror and the center of the mirror is called the principal axis of the mirror. So let me draw that on the board. If you have a concave mirror, the focus point is the location where the incoming parallel rays focus. So we'll call it the focus point. And then the center is over here, the center of the mirror, the radius of curvature. That's where the, that's how you would draw this mirror from this point, right? This would be the radius. This is the center of the mirror. The line that joins the center and the focus point here is called a principal axis. If you take a bunch of parallel rays and you apply the law of reflection, so what I have to do is I have to draw a normal to the surface of the mirror. And you folks all know that from geometry that the normal 
will go through the center. And you apply the law of reflection, and you will see that the ray will go through this focus point. In fact, what you'll see is if you do this repetitively, the rays, all the rays, will go through the focus point. Again, let me draw normal to the surface. I didn't draw that very well. But these rays will go through the focus point. That's what the focus point is. It takes parallel rays and focuses them to a point. Now I gotta be truthful about this. I, I, has, I haven't been truthful so far. In order for these rays to really go through the focus point, they have to actually be close to the principal axis. As you go further and further away from the principal axis, they actually won't go through the, through the focus point. Okay, so we are making an approximation. If you had a parabolic mirror, that would be true. But it doesn't happen with a spherical mirror. But as long as you're close to the principal axis, the rays that come parallel to the principal axis and are close to it, when they get reflected, they will go through the, pretty much go through the focus point. Now, you're gonna have a worksheet to do where you're going to go through and prove this, but I'm not gonna have you prove this mathematically I want you to prove just by drawing a picture, just like what I did here, but you, you're gonna to have to use a ruler and a protractor. You're going to apply the law of reflection when the light rays bounce off the surface. And you're gonna show by your drawing that the rays go through the focus point, at least the rays that are close to the principal axis. You'll find that the rays up here won't even go through the principal axis. You'll, you'll see that they even come close. So the worksheet that I'm gonna assign for you, which is due next week, uh, one of the things I'm gonna have you do is apply the law of reflection to a concave mirror. So on a piece of paper, you're gonna draw this out, use a compass, and then you're gonna draw some rays parallel to the principal axis and then apply the law of reflection like I did here. Remember, you can easily find a normal to this point by drawing a line that joins the center of the mirror and the uh, this point here which the light ray touches and then you use a protractor to make your drawing so you'll you'll make that drawing you'll draw it in uh, uh, you, you can draw it in pencil or different color pencil that'd be probably better you're gonna label everything and you're gonna draw me you're gonna tell me what the scale is the scale is important when you're in a drawing like this Okay, for every drawing you do on the worksheet, you want to put you want to write down what your scale is. Okay. And you want to clearly label everything. And that will prove to you that basically that the rays will go through the focus. Most of the rays will go through the focus point, the ones that are close to the principal axis. So that's going to be your, on your worksheet. That'll be due next week. So those rays that go through their focus point, F, um, that's really where the rays converge. And it turns out that the, the distance from F to the vertex of the mirror is half the radius of the circle. So that's a concave mirror. Here's a convex mirror. You have incoming parallel rays. You use the law of reflection. And you can show that all the rays diverge. Now, let me go back to the board. And let me draw the concave mirror. Uh, I'm sorry, the convex mirror. Again, an analogy would be the backside of a tablespoon or a soup spoon. So let me draw the convex mirror. Let's say the focus point is here. 
here the center. You would draw your rays coming in, like so. Then what you have to do is apply the law of reflection. So I'm going to draw normal. Again, in order for me to draw the normal, I draw a line that goes through the center. It's going to be normal to this point here. This is our incident angle. And then you can draw the reflected angle, theta. These two have to be equal because they have to obey the law of reflection. And you'll see that all rays do this. They diverge. When the rays hit this mirror, they diverge. However, if you take these, these rays that are reflected and extrapolate them back behind the mirror, I didn't draw this very well. I'm going to cheat a minute here. All right. You extrapolate them back behind the mirror. If you do this with a ruler, it comes out much better. Um, you'll find that these extrapolated rays will, will cross at the focus point. And so the focus point here is on the opposite side of the incoming rays. That's the convex mirror. Okay, let me say a few more things about these mirrors. Um, the focus point, like I said before, is located halfway between the surface and the center of the curvature. For a concave mirror, it is located in front of its surface. For a convex mirror, it's located behind the surface. The focal length is basically half the radius. The focal length is positive for a concave mirror and it's negative for a convex mirror. So if I were to draw and if I were to denote the focal length of this mirror, I would say that F, let me use a darker marker. F is minus R over 2. If I had, so this is a convex. For a concave, focus point is on the same side as the incoming rays. The focal length is R over 2. That's this distance. Again, that's this distance here. Now here is, this is what happens with lenses. And again, I am not going through all the details. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm not going all the, through all the, gory details involving lenses and images. I'm just going to give you a uh, overview. Um, and if, again, if you want more details, please read the textbook. I've drawn the convex mirror as having two sides that are convex. That's another name for that is a bi, bi con I'm sorry, not the mirror, but the lens. That's a uh, what would be termed a biconvex lens. Takes rays coming in at the principal axis or along the principal axis and the rays get refracted and as they pass through the lens they pass through the, they, they go to the focus point. So the rays coming in parallel to the principal axis are focused to the focus point. And I've drawn in the convex lens, if you can see it, the incoming ray gets bent once through the lens and again through the opposite side of the lens. So maybe let me, let me draw that on the board. Oops. Let me draw the convex lens on the board 
and show you what happens. And again, I'm, I'm ignoring all the details and they're, des they're described in your book. There's actually an equation that allows you to uh, calculate the focal length of a lens based on the radius curvature of the two sides of the, of the lens. So I'm going to draw the lens like so. Ray comes in. Oh, actually, let me draw the principal axis first. And again, I'm not drawing this to scale. Okay, this is the middle part of the mirror, of the lens. These two radii don't have to be the same. They could be different. In fact, lens can also be like this too. This is called a plano convex lens. This is called a biconvex lens. But I'm just going to call it convex. I'm going to call both of them convex. Okay, for our purposes. So anyway, let's Look at our ray that comes in, hits the surface, and I'm going to draw normal to the surface. This ray then will be bent towards the normal, so the ray will actually be bent downward. It hits the other surface. Let me draw this normal. And now when the ray goes from the lens material to air, it's going to be bent away from the normal because N here in the air is less than in the material. And so the ray will be bent downward again towards the focus point. And that's how the ray, how you would trace the ray. Okay, now normally what, when we're going to work with lenses, we're going to assume the lens is very thin. The equations we're going to be working with for the lens assume that the lens is very thin. And so instead of me drawing this as a lens, I'm going to just draw my lens just as a vertical line. When I start doing ray tracing for lenses, I'm, instead of drawing this, I'm going to draw this to reduce confusion because this becomes difficult when you start thinking about how the rays bent through here. The equation that we're going to be using that governs how images are formed is called a thin lens equation. It's going to assume the lens is thin. And for most problems that we do, that approximation is, is, is good. Okay. And so we'll be using that in drawing. I'm going to be drawing the lens like this. This is a vertical line. Whether it's a biconvex lens, plano convex lens or the concave lens, which is the second one you see in the figure. The concave lens, also known as, as a diverging lens, takes rays along the principal axis and they make them diverge, as you see there. And again, if you take those rays that are diverging and extrapolate them back to the other side of the lens, the rays will converge at the focus point. So notice that both of these have a focus point on both sides of the element. The convex lens will always form a real or virtual image. Okay, or I should say a convex lens can form a real or it can form a virtual image. The concave lens will always form a virtual image because it, the, the rays always diverge. Now, like I said before, the fact that a spherical mirror uh, focuses light to a point is only true for rays that are close to their principal axis. This really involves a small angle approximation. And in fact, if you look at a large object in a small mirror, you'll actually see the image of the object being distorted because of the spherical shape of the mirror. We call a spherical aberration. 
when you have a large object in front of a small mirror, its image will be distorted because a lot of the rays will not be close to the principal axis. Now, lenses have a different problem. Um, lenses have a problem called chromatic aberration. And what that means is, remember that materials like prisms, when light goes through a prism, the index of refraction depends on the color of light going through the prism. Well, the same thing for a lens. And so, red light going through a lens will be bent slightly differently than blue light or green light. And that's going to cause a distortion of the image. And we call that chromatic aberration. Now regarding spherical aberration, one way to get rid of that problem is to use a parabolic mirror. And you can create lenses, you can build lenses, they're called achromatic lenses to, to help eliminate uh, chromatic aberration. So what I want to do now is look at the role of the laws of reflection and ref I should say refraction, sorry. The laws are reflection and refraction in the formation of images. Imagine we have an object placed in front of a concave mirror or a convex lens. It turns out we only need three rays to locate the image. In fact, when I, sh when I did the case for the plane mirror, I only really needed two rays. But um, actually, in most cases, you only need two rays. But um, just to make sure, it's always good to use a third one. In addition, we're really going to look at the light coming from the tip of the object. If you can figure out where the image of the tip of the object is, then you can find the image of the rest of the object. So, I've drawn in the figure an object with, in front of a mirror. And it's really very easy to determine the location of the image. Again, like I said before, with the plane mirror, there's a lot of rays passing through that object, or they, that scatter off that object. And there's a lot of rays that scatter off the object and, had, and are directed towards the mirror. If I choose the right ones, I can easily find the location of the image. So first I, I look at the rays that are scattered off the top of the object, and there's a lot of them. One of them will be scattered and go parallel to the principal axis. So it's going to come in parallel before, and of course, any ray that comes parallel to the principal axis will be reflected through the focus point. So we say parallel before, focus point after. And that's the black ray that you see in the figure. So parallel before, focus point after. Now there's another ray that goes through the focus point. Those rays that go through the focus point will come out parallel afterwards. It's the opposite of the first one. So focus point before, parallel after. And in general, all you need is those two rays to find the image of the tip of the object. We already found the image of the tip of the object. Wherever the two rays intersect, that's where the image of the object is. So we already found it. So uh, parallel before, focus point after. Focus point before, parallel after. Okay. I'll say one more time. Parallel before, focus point after. And then the second one, focus point before, parallel after. Those are the two rays. Now there's a third one that goes through the center of the mirror. 
Because it goes through the center of the mirror, it's going to hit normal to the surface of the mirror and gets reflected straight back. And you can see those three rays intersect at the same point. That's how you find the image. Of course, you got to draw it to scale. I might draw some up on the board, but if you really want to do this accurately, you want to draw it to scale. If you, if you can get quadrule paper, draw this out, you will easily be able to find the image. So this is called a ray tracing. This is called a ray tracing for the mirror. And we're going to spend time doing this. Now, unfortunately, WebAssign, our WebAssign homework doesn't allow us to, it's harder to do a ray tracing in WebAssign. That's why I created that lab that we're doing right now. That's the focus of that lab is to really learn how to draw the ray tracings. Um, so you should get, you should become or practice as much as you can doing ray tracing. In WebAssign, when you do the WebAssign homework, you should try to do a ray tracing for some of those problems so you, so you get to see how the image is formed. But notice I only really need at most three rays. That's it. There's actually another ray you can use for the mirror. Let me show you that. And you see it in some books. So let me show you another ray that you can draw a fourth one. So this fourth one um, is pretty easy to draw. So let me draw the object and the mirror. And sorry for the background noise. Here's the mirror. And let me draw the object. Now, all I, all I need to do then is to uh, consider a ray that hits the top of the object and hits this point. This angle. And this angle are the same. But sometimes people draw that one, but then you have to, you have to be able to measure that angle. So you can also use that as uh, one of the rays you would draw. By the way, when you draw ray tracing, make sure you draw the arrows to indicate the direction of the rays. Like you see in the figure there. And so since this image, the image in this particular problem is in front of the mirror, that's a real image. You can project that. On a, on a screen or a piece of paper. Notice that the image is upside down, it's inverted. That's always happens with the real image. It's always upside down. Even the lens of your eye, when the lens of your eye produces an image on your retina, it's upside down, but your brain can flip it right side up. Okay, if you look at the image of an object on your retina. It, it actually is upside down. But your brain understands that and flips it upside up, right side up. Now what happens if the object is inside the focal length of the mirror? This one's a little bit more difficult. What happens if it's inside the focal length of the mirror? Maybe I should try drawing this on the board. So let me do an example where the object is inside the focal length of the mirror. And in fact, in this case, the image will be virtual but the image will actually be larger than the object. So let me draw a mirror with a large focal length. So here's F. And so the center of the mirror is like, um, I guess, way down here. 
Okay. And, and let me put an object. Uh, let me make it green. Let me find the correct green marker. Hopefully you folks can see that okay. And I'm going to do the first ray parallel before, focus point after. Okay, so I'll do the one parallel before, focus point after. That's going to be hard, right? Because I'm going to come in like this. Here's a different color. Then I'm going to draw the one focus point before. So let me get another color. Focus point before. How am I going to draw that focus point before, parallel after? So it's got to come from the focus point like this. And then it's going to be reflected parallel to the principal axis, like that. This ray and this ray, they're never going to intersect. No way. And then there's the one that goes through the center of the mirror. So let me get a different color. Now notice I'm, I'm freehanding this, okay? So this is not going to be easy. That's the one that goes through the center of the mirror. What I'm going to do is I'm going to extrapolate the rays on the opposite side of the mirror. These rays are never going to converge on this side, but if I extrapolate the rays on the opposite side of the mirror, across here, so hopefully I can get that third one across there. Remember, I'm freehanding, so it's much more difficult to do a freehand. I probably cheated a little bit, but my image is right here. If you look at it, it looks like the rays are coming from the opposite side of the mirror. All right? It looks just like the rays are coming from the opposite side of the mirror. And so this is the virtual image. The virtual image is always right side up. This is always true. As long as the object is inside the focal length of the concave mirror, you're going to produce a virtual image and it'll magnify the size of the object. It'll always be bigger. Now, in the previous case, when we uh, had the object out here, if you're in between these two locations, the image will actually be upside down and larger than the object. And as you go closer and closer to infinity, what happens is that the uh, image size will get smaller and smaller. So if you take an object and move it towards the focal point, the image will get larger and larger. And the image distance will get further and further away. Okay. As you increase the distance of the object from the mirror, the image will get smaller and smaller. And it will approach the focus point. In fact, one more thing I should say is that when the object is at the center of the mirror, the size of the object and the size of the image are the same.
Now, be careful when you're drawing uh, rays for the convex mirror. The convex mirror always forms a virtual image. The convex mirror or the convex lens always forms a virtual image. And so you always have to extrapolate the ray behind the mirror to find the location of the image. The same thing with the, with the concave lens. Okay. So the image is going to be virtual. If you have a virtual image, you have to extrapolate rays. So here's a convex mirror. If you look at the rear view mirror on the passenger side, this is an example of the ray tracing for it. The object will always appear smaller than it is. Isn't that what it says in the mirror? The convex mirror produces a virtual image and it's smaller than the object. Why do that? Well, the convex mirror gives it a bigger angle of view for you. That's why it's used. So let's do a ray tracing for this one. So I want to do a ray tracing for this one. And um, I always have a harder time with this one. So I'm going to, um, I'm actually going to do the easiest one first. I'm probably going to go in a different order and draw my ray tracing. Just because it's, um, the one going through the center is always the easiest one to draw, especially for this one. So let me draw my, and again, remember, I'm drawing this freehand, but if you're doing it on paper, you've got to draw it to scale. Okay. If you had quad rule paper, you, you, might not need, you might not even need a ruler, because uh, at least the quad rule paper, you, have, you can make measurements based on the number of boxes. Okay, but if you have paper that has no lines, you got you got to use a ruler. Okay, but if you have quadruple paper, on an exam I'll give you quadruple paper, and all you need is to count boxes for the exam. It's pretty easy. So let me draw my convex mirror. In fact, let me make everything black colored. And let me put the focus point right there. Um, let me put an object. I'm going to make the object green. Hopefully it's not too hard to see. Make it larger. And let me draw the center of the, of the mirror too. I need the center of the mirror. So let me draw this distance is about that distance. So. All right, so I think the first one I'm going to do is the one that goes to the center. I'm going to draw the best I can. So this a ray of light hits the top of the object and heads towards the mirror. In reality, it's going to be it's going to this one that's going straight toward the center is actually going to get bounced back in the opposite direction. Okay, it, this ray that's headed towards this point is really going to get bounced, uh, bounced straight back in the opposite direction because it's going along the normal to the mirror. It's the same thing as if I take a ray of light and shine it perpendicular to a mirror, it's going to go bounce straight back. So what I'm going to do is take this ray and extrapolate it back here. Okay, so I always draw the extrapolated rays as dotted lines. Okay, let's take the one that's parallel before. Let's do it red. Parallel before, focus point after. So there's another ray that scatters off the top of the object. And it's parallel to the principal axis. That's as parallel as I can make it. And if it hits this mirror, this ray really wants to go toward the principal axis, but really, I'm sorry, to the focus point. But it's actually 
going to get reflected this way. This incoming ray, which wants to go through the focus point, really gets reflected back out that way. But if you extrapolate the ray on the opposite side, it does go through the focus point. You can already see where the image of the object is at. Now, where's the third one? The third one goes towards the focus point. It goes towards this point. It hits here, but it doesn't get to this point because the mirror blocks the mirror reflects the ray. And it really reflects it parallel to the principal axis. But if you extrapolate this ray backwards, you'll see that these three rays cross. And that's where the image is of the object. It's a virtual image. Oops, should have drawn it in green. So that's a virtual image. Okay. That's not a convex mirror works and all the ray tracings for the convex mirror pretty much work like this because the image is always virtual. Unlike the, uh, the, con the concave mirror, you can, have a real, you can have a real image or a virtual image depending on where the object is at. In this particular case, you always have a virtual image. So now let's learn how to do a ray tracing for a lens. I'm not always going to draw the lens as you see there. I'm going to draw the lens basically as a vertical line. But like I said before, the equation that we're going to be using that describes how the lens produces an image is called the thin lens equation. And I'm gonna draw the lens from now, uh, really when I draw ray tracing uh, on paper, I'm just gonna draw the lens as a vertical line. And I'll draw the focus points. Remember the lens works by refraction. It bends light and produces an image. And it turns out that the, the three rays that you need to produce the image, or to locate the image of an object with a mirror, you use the same three rays here again. So let me draw it on the board. So I'm gonna draw my lens just as a vertical line. Because if I, if I give it thickness, it gets confusing. And there is a thick lens equation, but we don't learn it here. That's, that's beyond the scope of this class. And there's all kind of derivations in your notes, in, I'm sorry, in your, in your book regarding a, a lens. So I want to draw my lens like this. I'll put the letter L there so that indicates it's a lens. And then I'm going to draw the focus points because there's a focus point on both sides. And I don't care whether this is a biconvex lens or a plano convex lens. It's a lens that focuses light, okay? At least at this level of this course, that's, that's how I'm going to look at it. And of course, if you took a more advanced course in optics, then you'd have to be more, uh, we have to talk about this in more detail, you know, whether we're dealing with a plano convex lens or a biconvex lens. Okay. So I'm going to have an object in front of the lens. And I'm going to do a ray tracing. 
It's going to be the same rays. All right. I'm going to do a parallel before. Focus point after. Make sure you draw arrows so that the reader can understand how to draw them. My PowerPoint figure doesn't have them because I, I did them in a, um, with paint. I did that picture of paint like 20 years ago. So it's, it's a pain to draw that. Um, the next one is focus point before. Parallel after. You can already see where the image of the object is at, the crosshair. And for, just for fun, let's do a third one. And again, on paper, it's easier, it's, it comes out better because you're using rulers. The other one goes just through the center. The one that goes through the center of the lens goes straight through, doesn't get bent or anything. Because it always works when you drive freehand. And so that's where the image is of the object. And the image is upside down. If you project it onto a screen, you'll see that the image is upside down. And it's going to be smaller or bigger than the object, depending on how close you are to the uh, focal point. And mine is about the same size because I'm about you're about twice the focal length away, the image and the object size are going to be about the same. As you move this closer to the focus point, this image gets bigger. You can look through the lens and you can see, easily see whether the image is real, I'm sorry, whether the, the, the image is real or not. If it's the image is upside down, when you look through the lens, that's a real that's a real image this can be this is indicative of the lens of your eye the, the lens of your eye is different than the lens you would use in the lab because your eye can change its focal length okay the focal length of a lens you use in the lab is fixed so your eye can can change its focal length so that you can see objects you can pr produce an uh, an image of an object on the retina of your eye when an object is real far away, your eye is um, relaxed and readily produces an image on the retina. But as the object gets closer and closer, your eye gets tensed, it changes its focal length, and you, get, uh, you also get an image on the retina. And remember that the image on the retina is upside down. But your brain understands what to do with it. Okay. So here's an example where the object is inside the focal length of the lens. And just like with the mirror, it produces a virtual image. So let's Let's try to trace it. I'm going to trace it here on the screen. And I have a laser pointer that allows me to do this. So here's the object. Okay. Parallel before, focus point after. There's the first one. Then this one, the second one is focus point before, parallel after. Notice the blue one and the red one will never converge on the opposite side of the lens. Notice on a lens, the real image is for, formed on the opposite side of the lens. In the mirror, the real image is formed on the same side as the object. And then there's the one that goes through the center. If you take these rays and extrapolate them back, you'll find that they converge to a point, and you'll find that's where the image is at. It'll be a virtual image because it's going to be behind or the light basically behind the object the light rays here are going to the right but the image is 
to the left of the object. That's a virtual image. Here, we have a diverging lens. The concave lens, it can be a biconcave or a plano concave, but we're going to treat it like a diverging lens. It takes rays and it makes it bends them away from the principal axis. So here's an object, and this is always going to produce a virtual image. So here's an object. And uh, the first ray here is parallel to the principal axis. The lens will bend it away from the principal axis. Here's another ray that's supposed to go through the focus point, but it's actually this focus point. Okay. Because the focal length on a diverging lens is negative, so it's got to go towards this guy. It goes through this guy. It goes through this one. It wants to hit this one, but it's, or, I'm sorry. Uh, it goes through towards this one, but then it gets um, bent parallel to the principal axis. So this is the focus point before parallel afterwards. It does that. So this ray comes in. It wants to go towards this focus point. And again, it's this particular focus point because the focal length is negative, but it comes out parallel to the principal axis. And then there's the one that goes through the center of the lens. That one goes undeflected. Now take these rays and extrapolate them back. That's what the dotted line means. They're extrapolated arrays. You extrapolate this ray backwards and where they cross, you get the virtual image. There's really you know, one case for this because the image is always virtual, just like the, the convex mirror. Here's a demo of a concave mirror producing a real image. This mirror has a very short focal length and you can tell that the image is real because uh, first of all you can see me upside down and then you can see the ball is upside down and it looks like it's coming right at you. If I flip this over, concave mirror, I'm sorry, convex mirror, the image looks like it's actually behind the mirror. That's how I can tell the difference between the, the convex in the concave mirror. Okay, let's see. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. All right. So um, I want to demonstrate to you uh, how images are formed with a single lens. So I have an object candle, and I have a lens here um, uh, near the candle, and the object is right now outside the focal length of the lens and I have a screen on there. So I have it set up so that the lens is real close to the uh, object and you can see the image on the screen. The image is large and it's upside down. As long as the image is real, the image will be upside down when you have when you just use a single lens. So what I'm going to do is change the object distance. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to place the object further away from the lens and as I do that, you will see that the image will get smaller and smaller. Notice how small it is right now. Let me get even further. You can barely see it. It's upside down though. I can see that it's upside down and it's a real image. Okay, that's it.